that's part of the skill. The skill that we're building. What do you think? What is this? What do you think the skill of podcasting is? Skill of podcasting? Yeah. Like someone that's really skilled at podcasting. What are they good at doing? Like um, what makes them what makes them skilled? What makes it like I don't know, but I almost think that it's stu- it's stuff that you can't notice. Like if someone's so good, they make it look easier, they make se- things seem natural. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. Um I don't know. knowing when knowing when to listen and knowing when to talk i guess yeah or interject yeah or yeah interject or like not overlapping sentences with someone you know like and all those things though are really hard to keep track of in the moment yeah so i guess yeah that's why there's skills that can only be developed while you're doing a podcast i I would also say in a similar vein that knowing when to stay on a topic mm. or I don't know something if it's like interesting if you feel like it's juicy mm. and knowing when to jump to something else even if like maybe you were only talking about that something for a second yeah and that that's something I, I, I think about like when I listen to podcasts or when I like the few times I've re-listened to the, these episodes yeah I think that depends on what you want your podcast to be about too yeah. though because like I've heard some that are very sporadic with what they're talking about. Yeah. And then I've heard some that are very like um gold driven. Not gold driven, but like what's the word I'm looking for? They have a purpose. They're there for a reason, so they stick with it the whole episode. Yeah. You know? There's a like a really sp- a specific yeah. defined genre. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Which Man, genres are interesting. Yeah, and, for and podcasts. those podcasts do well. Like it's mm. good. It's a good strategy to find like the most specific niche and to be uh, to really drill down on that niche and to be the best or to be the only or to be the biggest mm. for that type of thing. And like the the marketing people and like I don't know, people on Twitter they'll call it like personal monopoly, like find your personal monopoly or like yeah. find the combination of things that is so specific that you're interested in that you become the best in the world at it. Um, and that's kind of the idea of skill stacking as well, like stacking a set of skills that maybe that combination has never been done before. Mm. So then you can become best of the in the world at you know, this plus this plus this, yeah. whatever it is, you know, software plus music plus editing and editing. Yeah. yeah like, or something like that. Like if I you're, mean, if yeah, editing, I mean, really, editing. if you're that person, if you're a software engineer and a musician mm-hmm. and a, a, a music producer, like you could probably write, you probably have insight and, personal experience, specific knowledge that no one else has that would allow you to make like really valuable uh, music editing software or something. Mm. Like you would know exactly what the musicians want, what the engineers want and what's possible from a software perspective. And like, yeah, so there's an idea in that. And like with podcasts all the same, like if you're the only he-man podcast or something like <laughs> fan of like some yeah. random like show or thing that people Movie. are into yeah and like if you're the biggest like that's a good place to be like you get solid like viewership and wouldn't have much competition yeah. and like what we're doing is actually the worst strategy <laughs> <laughs> yeah just talking well or, or just like deciding to cover a variety of topics oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and for us it's interesting it hasn't it's been like a huge huge variety up mm-hmm. to this point like we've definitely talked about technology we kind of just talk like about what, what we talk about normally yeah like what, i mean what if, we're interested in yeah i mean what are some podcasts that you like that are kind of off the beaten path of the genre do you step out of a genre when you listen to podcasts like do you have like you listen so you listen yeah. to like a lot of bitcoin podcasts right yeah are there any podcasts besides like a almost like a talk show? 
because I feel like a lot of people listen to those as well. Is there like a almost an obscure genre that you listen to at all or know of? Yeah, you know, like everything is just talk talk shows and interviews mostly. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, nothing nothing really experimental. I would say. I mean, there's weekly. I see, like some of my favorite podcasts are like in the in the Bitcoin space, for example, are like weekly update podcasts mm-hmm. where they talk through news, and it's kind of like a very like laid back experiential podcast where you're like exper- experiencing this moment in time and reflecting on these stories with these people and it feels significant for the week but that's that's a really specific thing like following i don't know i guess people have podcasts it's like, a like current that event like thing yeah current yeah. event type of thing um i'm trying to think what else like there's there's this hacker podcast i i like and I guess what's interesting about it is it's like three pseudonymous individuals, or or t- sorry, two pseudonymous individuals hmm. that have like stage names, but it's not their real names. Hmm. And it's called the Cypherpunk Bitstream Podcast. Okay. And they like record out of a uh, what they call it, Taz Zero, hmm. which stands for Temporary Autonomous Zone, <laughs> where they have these like. Um, shipping containers in this some you, unknown location somewhere yeah. in Eastern Europe, <laughs> <laughs> and they just like have these this this hacker village. Huh. They have like nine containers, and they have people like come in and get vetted, and then eventually, if there's space, they can like come in and live in this temporary autonomous zone if they contribute. That's crazy, and if they have similar interests. So it's all, like all of these pseudonymous individuals that are like coming together through the internet and through this like very specific interest mm-hmm. of like uh, like if you're that deep into that stuff you're you have a long track record of doing yeah. other, <laughs> other other of, similar <laughs> activity yeah i mean basically just doing illegal s- do whatever the fuck you want kind it, of yeah yeah i mean essentially yeah and like so those people like they have a lot of a lot of power that's that's really cool i only listen to like an obscure genre that i've ever listened to is essentially a horror tv show but take out the tv part oh literally yeah, like, like a, a performative arts series. yeah radio series so that i've i haven't experienced cool. anything like that though <laughs> i mean that but that's just like that's almost not even a podcast like that's just a book like, it, those it was have been around. No, yeah, exactly. Or like it, a b- audio it essentially book. was an audiobook. There's like different variations. There's a narrator type, which those can be kind of cool, but it, it gets kind of like old because it feels like someone's just reading you a book, which they basically are. Yeah. And then the performative arts one, if they have good foley, like sound foley, like oh, uh, added in sound to make things seem more realistic. Yeah, if yeah. it's done right, it's you can get like pretty lost in that. Like you can get lost in the. Uh, there's the one sauce. called the black <laughs> tapes. Yes, in the sauce, but it was the, called the black tapes. I and actually it, remember that. I think really? I listened to that a little bit. Didn't they have some episode about like some uh, musical notes yeah. or something that like yeah some like cultists were, were using or something? Yeah, it was yeah. very like I, I used to listen to that and uh, what is the other horror podcast it's i think it's one of the biggest ones it's just like no sleep no sleep was yeah. it from because yeah that's like a reddit thread yeah yeah that came from reddit yeah right? yeah i mean those are great performative arts ones are great but those that's the extent of like yeah. kind of see that's a that's a thing that's like the hard, hard podcast to make performative mm-hmm. arts podcast where you have to like record sound effects and have good yeah sounding voice actors and especially a podcast because usually you're doing it at first for just like i mean essentially you don't have any well, funding y- to you back have to you bootstrap <clears throat> i mean you have to like either you start independent yourself. yeah you you either start independent and have no funding at all or you like have a deal with like iheart radio or some shit or like <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. like it it Usually only happens one or two ways. It's crowdfunded or then it's like... There's actually one... Fuck, I can't even remember the name. 
I'll have to look it up and I'm literally going to bring it up next episode because that's how much I care about it. But it stopped midway because um, this guy like got sick or like his wife got sick and it and it still hasn't finished. And like the last oh. chapter of it hasn't finished. And it was done in like 2009. And I Whoa. got on like internet threads to look it up and see. And people still today are like, when the fuck is it going to... Like, when is it going to come out finally? People are still waiting for it to end. That's I'll crazy. have to find I'll have to find the name. Sorry. No, that's cool. <laughs> that's, that's interesting, <laughs> though. The Lost, like, the Lost podcast. Yeah, episodes. yeah, essentially, yeah. And, like, he, I guess he was in contact on the threads and then recently hasn't been in contact. So it's, yeah. like, a super weird kind of mystery. Maybe not mystery now. Maybe I should. I looked, I looked it up, like, a year ago. So, mm-hmm. Maybe it changed from from then. It, it's interesting, like, <clears throat> like think about lost podcasts, mm-hmm. like far enough in the future, like this er, this time we're in, we're in will be like a uh, just like a twinkling of lots of activ like lots of digital recordings and activity that that don't decay, mm-hmm. so they can live forever. But then, like, there will be gaps. And people will like wonder, and there will be mysteries about like the history that's lost that wasn't recorded digitally. I mean, I guess you know, well, there's physical <clears throat> artifacts. Like we'll hold on to as many physical artifacts as we can and preserve them. But I don't know, like how long does that stuff last? And mm-hmm. and having like if we had digital like media from like the Revolutionary War right. or something, like I don't know how. How would, like, what would that mean to us? Like, what would that, but of course then, like, it's probably like, it wouldn't mean shit. We would just, like, live the same lives and be on TikTok, but I don't know. It, but it's kind of like the thing when you're watching World War II footage, mm-hmm. I feel like, because World War II footage is so crazy. Like, it's yeah. like, oh, it's so old. And, and, there, and there's even older footage than that, but. I wonder if there's, a, I've, th- I've either thought this before or I've brought it up. I wonder if there's a theory out there that essentially, humanity keeps reinventing technology in different ways, but we also keep yeah. inventing technology to destroy ourselves over and over again. And what if like we get, what if we are always perpetually getting to a point where everything becomes digital and not physical, and then we end up wiping it all out. And then because it's digital, it's never recovered again. Damn. And then, we just keep rebuilding from primitive, but then that wouldn't explain like satellites and shit. Then it's like, <laughs> if we kept just doing that, then there'd be yeah. so much space debris. And by the time we got to being in space again, we'd be like, what the fuck is this? Unless they just disperse over a billion years. <laughs> so that's a book idea, man. No, but like it's, so there's a few separate ideas in there that we, have recreated technology throughout time. Mm-hmm. Definitely. That could be true. That we have destroyed ourselves with technology. Kind of a separate one, but like definitely like I've mm-hmm. I've heard people talk about that. And then well it's interesting what you're saying about like digital cuz cuz I said digital digital information it can last forever and that's true but like only if, if you store someone- it. If there's someone, if there there's a physical it, device, it's stored on still. Yeah, exactly. If there's enough backups. Yeah, that I was saying the I was saying the opposite. Like, what if we, what if we become all digital and then it gets wiped out and then it's like, well, we don't even know who the fuck we are anymore. Dude, you'd be like <laughs> digital, like ghosts, like cut off from yeah. like, your tie to reality. Yeah. Damn, that's a crazy. Yeah. Crazy <laughs> idea, dude. That spooks me out. But that's why I've been like, well, that, that, that kind of crosses over the simulation theory, which we don't have to get into, but you know, like, uh, well, if yeah, you I mean, are the, cut we, off, like if you're already in a simulation, you could just make another simulation. I would argue that this, <laughs> and this might be dumb, but like the simulation theory has only been created ever since we created simulations. So it's like, well, it, once we created simulations and then saw that our simulations were improving mm-hmm. in step with 
our computing capabilities, which like mm. we've talked about Moore's law before, like the law that or or the observation that computing improves basically two x every eighteen months or every twelve months or something like that. And so, like, computer graphics and simulation capabilities have in the same regard. And so it's just, it's kind of one of those things. It's like you project it forward, our data capabilities and all that, and then you start to play around with some math with some variables, and then you can actually have a convincing mathematical case, even though it's, it, it's, it's outside of our intuition. And that's basically where the simulation theory comes mm. from. And if you hear, like, if you hear, uh, what's his name? Nick Bostrom. Nick Bostrom. He is the scientist that came up with the simulation theory. If you hear the hypothesis, he's like, he's like, here are the assumptions. He's like, there are a few assumptions that come with it. I don't remember the exact assumptions, but he's like, given these assumptions, these are the three possible outcomes. These are the two that are most likely by math. And then if you take these three assumptions and one of them is just like um one of them is one of the assumptions is that we are going to continue improving our capabilities to make simulations so that's an assumption an assumption mm -hmm. so if you don't believe that like okay that's a hole in the argument but basically with the three assumptions it's the math can show that um it's, it's more likely we live in a simulation but, yeah, I, a lot of people have problems with it. And it's uh, it's one of those ideas, like, it's so... It's almost a cliche thing to t talk about in a podcast. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But at the same time, but, I don't so know. So maybe it's like, that's like everything we talk about. I don't give yeah. a shit. It's interesting. I like to argue against it, though, because I feel like so many people feel like... I don't know. Well, life people is just, love cool ideas. They want to like jump on and be like, "Oh yeah, yeah." I think that's why I love <laughs> fighting against it in a way, or being a part of the uh, counter argument. But in reality, I don't really lean a certain way. You know, I don't really like. I'm just taking everything in, just like everyone else, a day at a time. Like taking in the reality around me as I see it yeah, and trying to type make sense of thing. Of it. In t yeah, trying to make sense of it. So anytime I think I get the opportunity to counter something that's the popular belief during the uh, current times, I think I take it. I don't know if that's be I don't know if that's like embarrassingly edgy <laughs> or see, just a form of like trying to question everything Does that makes sense it, it depends i feel like that's a spectrum but there's mm. definitely people that are like devil's advocate basically like uh, and that's their default or they just poo poo on any idea i don't i don't like shitting on things like yeah and just and not for the, and not that i'm saying you're no yeah i know i, I just wanted it's kind of like the same genre to me is like those like the people that are always like downing on an idea, and it's like, yeah, every idea has flaws, but we're not talking about the flaws of things. We're talking about the interesting possibilities of things. Like that's just what's fun to converse about. Like, yeah, if you want to go deep on something, you mm -hmm. you bring up counterpoints. I don't know. Like, I'm just talking. Well, yeah, about I mean that, that, but that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, is it? I'm scared that the longer we keep, I don't know. I'm scared that we've lost the ability to be a, like people to be able to be against something, but like not shit on it at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like totally. Or yeah. vice versa, when people think that someone else has something to say against something, they're like, "Oh, they're shitting on it." Does that make sense? Totally. Which yeah. I fall in both camps. It just depends on the the topic, I guess. Uh -huh. You know. Ha but, ha have you heard of like straw man? And like Steel Man, mm -hmm. like, so Straw Man is an old term. It means like, uh, like a, what do you call it? A scarecrow, like oh, okay, a straw okay. man. And it, people would say like, oh, you're straw manning an argument. And that uh, just means that you're like, trying to, you're representing, or like, yes, yeah, you're representing it in a negative way. Hmm. And that's like a normal, like, tactic of like debate that people use. But like actually 
if you can, like, if you can take the idea of, and then Steel Man is the opposite. Yeah. If you can take that idea and utilize it and say, I actually want to straw man my own arguments and I want to Steel Man my opponent's arguments so that I can, like, poke holes in my own belief. And, like, that's a powerful tool and it's hard to do and... Basically, so I only saying, like, I only use that type of thinking honestly with Bitcoin because like that's I, like I've just gotten deep enough and like if you get into Bitcoin, you're basically believing what ninety eight percent of the world doesn't believe, hmm. and so you have to like really be convinced. You have to really be convinced yourself, and also you're putting money on the line, and like it's a whole rabbit hole. So you have to be convinced, and so like, and then reading like bad news reading articles like maybe it scares you and you have to like learn like oh is this really a threat is this really and like that that long journey has me to where it's like i understand this in a way that i never i don't know i never used it before but just like really poking holes in your own belief system and like knowing every argument Mm -hmm. better than the opponent and now it's to the point to where like i don't see I haven't seen any good arguments in so long. Dude, yeah. That I'm like, I'm like, I, I just want someone to say something interesting. Yeah. Like, I want to hear something interesting because I haven't in so long. The the stuff I've been hearing is like the same problems that I've already wrestled with and I feel confident about the yeah. answers I came to. That's why that's what I'm kind of like annoyed with personally is like, yeah everyone knowing everything and it's for sure and it's all this shit like i'm really kind of tired of it because it gets so boring and then people start people just start i feel like saying these absolutes absolutes people just start saying these absolutes and they just (laughs) (laughs) they just piss me off um the planet was ravaged by intense volcan damn there's some crazy shit going on the TV. We're watching yeah, I don't know what volcanoes we're watching on planets. But yeah, you're right. There are not any interesting arguments. And I think that's kind of why... I just think it's fun to ch- try and yeah poke holes in theories. That way it, like, it almost encourages the people who are about them. It encourages the people who are about them to firmly stand and be like, no, this is why I think this is like legit. Yeah. Or it like could cause the people that are just along for the ride and they're kind of just saying, yeah, I believe in this. Yeah. They're just agree. Then they just kind of like fall whenever they're challenged with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's why I think it's interesting to be the counter argument sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's a weird but balance, like, but, but I really wish that arguing would lose the negative connotation. Maybe it's that way in my head. Maybe that's a me thing. But well, there used to you be e- there used to be ethics or like protocol for like debate w- and discussion. I wish that that was like a thing that people everything wasn't so like um, I don't know standoffish. Maybe I th- I think, but that but 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 that's an equal thing. Me like an equal part that I need to keep in check, but an equal part that everyone else needs to keep in check in a perfect world. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) And I I think talking about like converse conversational protocols and like how people are more standoffish and people Mm -hmm. like are more into this like short, I I don't know, these, these short, shallow, like social media interactions, like clubhouse, Mm -hmm. which is a platform I've been playing on the past few weeks. Dude, I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm and I'm going to give you an invite. uh, Dude, you're you're lucky. It took me. I am lucky. I've been I've been waiting, dude. I've I I've literally been... have been thinking about asking people that I should not ask. Just like DM. That's them. what I did. And, really? Yeah, Talk, I, I, I DM'd like f- four to six people or Damn, something. I should have ju- I should have just done that because there were at least four or five people in the music world alone that I was like, oh, they have Clubhouse. But then I hear some political guys and like people that i listen to on podcasts and they talk about being on clubhouse and oh like, yeah yeah and so it's kind of like two like different worlds out. yeah because <laughs> no i felt that at first i was like damn they're just talking about whatever in there yeah and so but i i guess i like i feel like that platform it has a chance of it's it's really <sighs> in 
what am I trying to say? It really straightens people out. Mm-hmm. Like people just won't like you in Clubhouse if you're not concise or if you are just, just shitty ass. or you're a troll. Just yeah, whatever it is. Like you're there to just yeah, yeah. Your intentions are like the intentions are more under a microscope on there. Yeah, and it's just, which is which should be good if you're on a public speaking platform. Yeah, and and that's what it is. Like the host or the hosts or mm-hmm. moderators of the room. Like there's a stage, and there's not visuals in this. Like there's mm-hmm. just you just have a profile picture. There's just icons, but there's a stage area of the app where people can talk and they can unmute themselves. And then there's basically a observer like attendant listener like yeah people that w- people that want to be in there yeah and yeah. with a max room size of like i think it's like eight thousand now or something wow no way and so yeah it, there's been some pretty crazy rooms and already like when elon was on clubhouse uh you know it was a maxed out room and then there was like multiple other rooms of thousands of people because people in the maxed out room were leaking it into other rooms oh Dang. Why? So <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Uh, Clubhouse Punk is rock, bro. Clubhouse is going to be huge. So I'm I'm marking this in my. It's already huge. So Dude. I'm not very yeah. I'm not very forward thinking for saying this, but like mark my words, it's going to be huge. People aren't ready. Hmm. Uh, it's going to be a very new medium for communication, and where Twitter Twitter like de- democratized or like opened up the written medium for anyone to come. And, you know, just, like, take a shot at seeing if their ideas were attracted to people and if they could get a lot of followers or if they were interesting or smart or insightful or whatever. Like, Clubhouse is going to do that with with speech, with sharing ideas, with conversation, which is a much... It's a much more evolutionarily deep Mm -hmm. uh, process for us that we're we're much more familiar with. Mm -hmm. So people are going to connect over Clubhouse... And ways that are insane, and I've already had, you know, some some pretty interesting connections and just experiences as a listener mm. that are very very sticky. Like mm. it can be addictive, especially if there's like clubhouse rooms for really niche things that you might be into. Yeah, like I can I can imagine for game. I mean, gamers are on Discord chat, right? And stuff like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Discord is also really cool too. I mean, I would yeah. argue that podcast, which to circle back around to what we begun talking about podcasting is a good way to kind of keep those what was it you said like conversation um is it ethics is that uh, what you like said? Uh, protocols protocol yeah, yeah protocol i like that better than ethics like yeah i feel like podcasting kind of that that's yeah a skill, no no like, podcasting is definitely a big direction for that as well but it's a, but also it is like involves editing as well like you were saying but i mean yeah that i guess that is a skill set to have in it like yeah just the conversation protocol and having a knowledge for that or making up your own protocol that has like its own i don't know well yeah no and there will be like you know if you are a comedian or you're with your best friends Mm -hmm. or you're a comedian hanging out with a you know, other comedians, like, that's one context where, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the protocol is different. Like, you can maybe yeah. push the rules a little bit more mm-hmm. and, like, throw some arrows, but, um, yeah. Yeah, man. What, what, what's, what's scarier, if we're alone or if it's actually really, really busy up there? Like, really, really busy. Like, galactic, multiple galactic federations, Alien mega structure. Are we talking about aliens now? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. We don't have to. No, I Let's... mean we can. We can. No. I'm just like making sure. <laughs> no, you don't I have just... to make sure of anything. I mean, I'm just saying which is scary. Because we could give it. We could get into it, but <laughs> but I mean. <laughs> uh, no, that's crazy. I'm fine with getting You're into it. Crazy. I just want to make. Okay, so well, I think what would be scarier is there being aliens being super busy like yo i guess rick and morty that's like the that's the go-to image not even that but like star star wars star wars i I like that more star wars okay because it's the same concept just not as exposed as rick and morty you know if you think about it like 
just multiple species with history and like eons of just like conflict that we have no idea about yeah history like no longer would be on this soil of like our understanding oh so yes so like a long time ago yeah if you far far away if you that's a that's a chilling if you discovered if you discovered that we're not the only species then you would be discovering new history you would have to then relearn everything in the concept of like okay i guess there's this galactic federation and this galactic thing and like you know that like universe and blah 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 you know or maybe yeah. not maybe that if you were interested in it you could i guess is the right thing to say no yeah i mean it's i don't like think everyone here would do that it, it pulls the right now when the, something is a mystery like we don't for some reason think about it much or mm-hmm. account for it much but it's like if you discover, like, for example, we don't know a mystery, like, where do we come from? Like, we mm-hmm. don't really n- know that. I mean, we have, like, the theory of evolution, but exactly how it happened, like, um, or where does life come from? I guess I should be mm-hmm. more fundamental. Like, why does the chromosome, you know, split or the amoeba yeah. split? Why is it, and, like, any of that stuff, like, or what is the meaning of life? But if if you were to discover the answer, it's like having a rug pulled out from underneath you where all of a sudden everything is different. Like if we discover there's a Rick and Morty uh, <laughs> space galactic federation busyness happening up there, instantly the rug gets pulled and so much changes about our lives and like what our lives mean. And mm. uh, I, I don't even like it's... Like, it begins to break your brain if you think about, like, what do I want to do in that world? Like, what, how do I motivate myself? Like, where is my hope? Where is, mm-hmm. I, I don't know, like, you have to totally reorient yourself with yeah. that type of stuff. I, I agree. And and that's why big ideas throughout history, they shake up. I guess, like, a classic would be, wait, not Copernicus. Is it Copernicus? Who got put on house arrest to the end of their life? Galileo. I have no idea. I think it was Galileo. But anyway, one of these ancient astronomers, like because they were pushing on the ideas of the church, mm. the ideas they about were the, the universe, yeah, they were like threatened. And I think Copernicus was killed. Galileo was put on house arrest. Dude, David Icke is the modern day Galileo. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. We all know that the Anunnaki created us and the lizard people. And the lizard people are lizard hybrids. Are they? Are they? Are the lizard people under the earth? Is that or like under? I don't like know. Underground? Is that probably the theory? Yeah. I, that's not something I believe in, but it's something that I've definitely researched <laughs> at at one time. It's a pretty crazy theory, but it's like. But but that uh, it's I, good to be see. It's good to be the type of person that looks at something like that and then moves on from it <laughs> yeah because you like, can definitely get to the point where you're keeping up with a website that looks like it's made in like 1991 and you're and a still lot of people in 2021 that. just like typing in the thread you know of just like there's gonna be big saw evidence today this year. hillary clinton talking on the news her eyes blinked sideways for the 57th time <laughs> like this year <laughs> like <laughs> I saw the forked tongue of Barack Obama. <laughs> That's um, no, yeah, but people, people do that. Like they get, yeah, they get sucked. Up. But it's like you want to be curious enough to like explore mm-hmm. rich, interesting ideas, or just ideas that are out. Like you were talking about earlier, like not wanting to follow suit, mm-hmm. kind of with the consensus, with what the crowd believes. Yeah. Like if you're searching for Whoa. ideas outside of the consensus, that's a good thing. But if you get sucked into a rabbit hole that's like negative or that's predatory, like I would argue but that's, David Icke. But yes, but that's kind of what I was saying even towards the beginning, like and my theory on outer space and being taught about it is like it's almost 
the conspiracy theories and like the alien races and all this shit is starting to become so more mainstream than it was 10 mm, more more like 15 to 20 30 years ago yeah that what if now it's becoming easier to fall for just like baloney about outer space and aliens and all this shit like why is it becoming the opposite you know does that make sense like it's growing in like you could argue yeah like you could argue oh we're just becoming smarter and we're figuring out more it's like yeah we yeah like that is obviously a possibility but i don't know maybe that's like a uh i don't even know what to call it i think it's probably multiple things and i think two of those <clears throat> things are for one people are actually more educated because mm-hmm. the idea of mm-hmm. aliens is or life outside of earth is pushing against old dogmas of the past. So it's inherently a dangerous idea, but it has like some some really convincing, you know, fundamental math and, mm-hmm. and arguments behind it. So it eventually got picked up. Eventually dogma could only hold it back for so long. Yeah. So it's growing in popularity because of that. But also I think it's just a sticky idea for people. It's attractive. It's fascinating. It's otherworldly religious almost you might mm-hmm. say and you know those are the naturally the, t- the types of things that draw people in or things that yeah give people like ambiguous hope um i don't know but and, th- and then there's probably a dozen other reasons besides that that Do is you- coming for i mean the internet and the free the proliferation of information mm-hmm. about it yeah i don't know do you think aliens walk among us among us? Yeah. Oh, fuck. I mean, that would kind of... That's kind of birthed from the lizard like people, people theory. People but ju- I'm not saying that. Uh, yeah. I don't... I Just because that was mentioned, I don't want that to become my identity. <laughs> no, totally. In my, in my uh, theory of aliens. Yeah, no. To- I mean, and neither of us have our minds made up. We're yeah. just... We loved to think about this and speculate. But... You know, if I think about that, people have these cheesy, like, men in black Mm -hmm. type of, like, ideas of that, like, weird cricket alien dudes, like, in a suit, like, (laughs) the little rascals, like, (laughs) (laughs) when they're going to the bank or whatever. Uh, But, like, me, when I think about that, like, if that were true, in our current, in the current, my current life experience, the sense I've made in the world, like... That, that would mean they're so good at disguising themselves, like so good at blending in and integrating wherever and however much they would be doing it that, you know, it's chilling and it would almost make you think, well, if they're here among us, it's very likely they are around us. Dude, what if that's why phones are, are becoming hi- more popular though? <laughs> what? Everyone is literally looking at their phones all the time. I don't know, man. If oh, I was an alien <laughs> right now in 2021, would be the perfect time. Pandemic, phones. Okay, well, there's there's so many distractions to where people aren't even leaving their house. So then I would just be walking around as an alien, being like, you "Yeah, know? There, there are ideas." This, but I this would look. I would blend in. I'm not saying like it's just aliens walking around. No, I, I mean this is like a genre of ideas where people think like. Steve Jobs was an alien. What if mm. Steve Jobs was an alien? Or what people think this a lot now, e- Elon Musk is an alien. Mm-hmm. People thought st- maybe Steve Jobs an alien. Maybe they thought he was saving the world. Maybe now you're saying that he was trying to distract the world. And maybe he was the first one to come in. And maybe he was like, oh shit, there are aliens. When he was eating LSD. <laughs> and then... Maybe he was chosen. He was like, oh yeah. Maybe they were like, Steve, we're going to give you this gift. And he made, yeah, he made uh, the cult of the LCDs, the the iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, and then it was like, you are going to create this distraction so we can walk among you and influence you. Yeah. And, pe- and then <laughs> people think Elon is an alien because Elon is doing the most to help conserve energy on the earth and like mm-hmm. have a renewable future and diversify life 
in the universe with SpaceX. I just think, and so I just like, think okay. it means he's not lazy. <laughs> Honestly, uh, it means more than that. I mean, obviously, he that means like he is looking out for the whole world, but like. Well, people know. demonize him. People people hate well, him. Yeah, which I think but is for up, like completely but. different reasons that you know we probably don't want to talk about on yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, because that ultimately doesn't matter. But I mean, he's a he's a rarity. Like he's whatever he is, he's a an experiment. He's mm-hmm. a one out of a hundred million, one out of a billion. Yeah, or or an alien, and and that's why people are attracted to say like, oh, is Elon an alien is is Steve Jobs an alien, but it's also kind of a win, what would you say a winner's bias or a mm-hmm. like they they're the ones that won so they're a genius, I I guess so I mean someone had to win, and the person that would have won would have been called a genius, mm-hmm. no doubt so it's like they just happen to be the genius, but then like something you're you're talking about like old Steve you know taking LSD. Getting some, getting some good ideas. Like he probably took more than that if he was talking to aliens. True, but you I mean, know, LSD and shroom. Maybe not shrooms, but at least LSD showed us that he was an experimental fella. Yeah. To the extent, I don't know, but I think you would need more to talk to aliens than just uh, LSD, unless it was like that '60s, '70s. You know, man, that good shit. <laughs> Yeah, what uh straight from the lab. What, what I guess Hoffman I guess had. I guess Steve Jobs would get it straight from the lab probably. I yeah, I feel like was, something he like He was around in like where they were I th- I think he was in school when mm. they when it was still legal to do testing on that. I, I don't know about his drug use specifically, but he was also into meditation, mm. stuff like that and deep into aesthetics, mm-hmm. which will make you crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think at, at one point we should talk about the different species of aliens for an episode. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we could maybe that's when we could bring up the sources that we have and we can do more research. Maybe it'll be like maybe we'll have a we'll a, have a more due diligence ep- episode. We'll have a few episodes. Yeah, we'll have an episode that we actually do research for. Yeah. I'd be down for that because that's something I've actually wanted to just get out of my brain because it's been up there for a long time. Yeah, same. Which, I have so much I want to get out of my brain. Yeah. it's drives me crazy sometimes. So maybe we should figure out a different... I don't know. I'm getting too meta See, right this, now. This, and this is why I want to get on Clubhouse. Like, Oh, yeah. I, like, I want to... I mean, I want to have conversations, not that I just want to talk to people, but like, I want to have some interesting conversations, have my ideas collide, Mm -hmm. the people, you know, have them poke holes in it, all of that. Like, I I yearn for that. I haven't gotten enough of that. I'm a person that's especially, I like to converse and talk and hear about ideas. And Mm -hmm. so, like, God, the whole, this whole year and a half has been rough. Yeah. In that regard. But, um, Anyway, interdimensional beings. Oh, um, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that's what I was getting at with with mm. LSD. And this is you know like we don't have to we don't have to go too deep into this no, because let's go. also with the types of <laughs> aliens, I guess interdimensional being might be a a type or a genre of alien belief that exists, but um Well, I well, mean what yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I just well, is there anything we need to talk about that has to do with dimensions even before we start even talking <laughs> about interdimensional beings? Well, I don't I don't know what I mean, uh, interdimensional being I don't know how accurate that terminology even is, but mm-hmm. what that, what that means to me is like there it is outside of our perception. Mm. Like we perceive in four dimensions, basically three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be the consensus, but what does that even mean? Like that's, I don't understand the fundamentals of that. Like, so that's just like, these are just words to me. Yeah. But the concept is outside, like totally outside of our, you know, perception. Yeah. Completely on the other side of something that we can't even see the border of it. 
because there's no borders here. Like we look out, there's mm-hmm. lots of stuff, and then it ends in complete darkness, and like that's all that we see that the universe is. Yeah, and and so okay, and so my, my point with interdimensional beings is you, if you're asking any of these questions, like what what does it mean, like if you do a bunch of DMT and you go to like a world of <laughs> of you know geometry and gods speak to you and give you knowledge and like if you have that experience like what does that mean like why does that happen do what if that we're mean? the interdimensional beings well what if that, we what if we that's take religion this, no 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 what if, are we back yeah so what if we <laughs> are the <laughs> What was it again? Oh what if gosh. we are the uh, interdimensional? Beings, yeah, interdimensional man. beings. It's been like, it's been it's been a few minutes. Okay, okay. <laughs> I remember exactly what I was gonna say though. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna yeah, so I'm gonna we con- had some technical difficulties. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so what I was b- basically saying is that the question of these really really big scoped question like what is consciousness? Is God real? Mm -hmm. Uh, are aliens real what does it mean the experience we have on psychedelics and the things we see like what does that mean is that real like all of these questions they're connected I I think they're connected to each other because like if okay like like here's an example for for aliens like alien life if aliens exist you know maybe there are other types of consciousness, higher levels of consciousness. Maybe there's higher planes of existence. Like, uh, suddenly everything is under question. You don't know, like, we have these assumptions based off of our experience of consciousness, of 3D space, and in in the one-dimensional time that moves in one direction. But if there are conscious, if there is consciousness that can break those rules or has more broader rules that it works within, and we Mm -hmm. just can't comprehend that, you know, like that connects to consciousness. That connects to psychedelics. That makes, you know, people think they see aliens on psychedelics. People think they see gods or angels or demons on psychedelics. You know, there's there's all sorts of religious experiences, near-death experiences. People almost die and they see magnificent things. Their brain produces an experience that's, you know, like that of a psychedelic experience or an intense DMT experience. And it, you know, these are, these are connected because it's like, if this is happening, if you're having some psychedelic, trippy, Aztec, you know, geometrical experience with gods talking to you, what are you supposed to think when you come back to reality where we don't know where we came from? We don't, we don't know if there's other life out there. We don't know Mm -hmm. if there's God. We don't know, like, (laughs) so so many things we don't know. Most of the things we don't know. We don't Mm -hmm. have a fundamental theory of of physics we've only been intelligent enough to do science and to like really introspect about the way of the world yeah for i mean Certain basically since time. greek philosophy and like reasoning yeah. like the foundations of reasoning yeah and so yeah like i think these things are connected and like it it truly makes me think and <laughs> i don't know and like when you, if you talk about aliens among us it, it, <clears throat> You know, it makes you think like all these things are connected. Are the aliens the demons? You know, yeah, or maybe they, the demons or are aliens. Angels or... like aliens, like you know, biblical stories or not even biblical stories, like any type of Bible throughout the world. Meaning, like different any, religions, any religious, any religious. I guess is what I should say. Yeah, text. any religious text like talks about there being evil spirits and good spirits and like yeah. things that. Things that fly, things that come yeah, from chariots, different worlds. Like burning chariots. And yeah. Yeah, like it's weird that they all have similar traits and similar descriptions, but yet we still have wars about all this shit. Yeah. And we still have conflict and like uh, debates that get so heated that like people hate each other for it. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And... <clears throat> it really it shakes even if you believe in Christianity the things that 
a lot of a lot of Christians ignore in the Bible, like in the Old Testament, are disturbing things where you're like, if this is true, what does that mean? Yeah. Like, obviously, if you're a good Christian, and really, if you're just humble in general, then you're meek before God, and you trust, and you have faith in God's judgment, and that it's higher than your own. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's just being humble, basically, but it's like, yeah, if you've got, like they talk about in the nymphs in the Bible, like giants, they talk about people living for hundreds of years, a thousand years, they talk about uh, demons on a regular basis coming down and just like swarming on yeah, people and tormenting people. people. Yeah. And or even God angels coming same. down and visiting people and them being yeah. like completely terrified and petrified and like were shaken for the rest of their lives because of it. Yeah. And and us, we've woken up in this kind of boring modernized world and we look around and we're like are the peaks really that high and the valley valleys that mm-hmm. deep as far as like what really happens in this place? What's really possible in human experience? And um, or were all of those experiences in those religious texts brought about by psychedelics or some things? That's another theory or debate or I guess argument. Yeah, no, to throw in the mix too. Totally, and and there's a totally if you're a completely. What, what do you call them? Like a staunch materialist. Basically mm-hmm. someone who's like just a total believe in the capital S science type of person like uh, Occam's Razor, like all those things. Like for that type of person, you know, you could probably explain this idea from an evolutionary standpoint. You know, like the ideas of religion come from cultural practices and altered states and s- psychedelic. And, yeah. you know, there's all sorts of altered states outside of psychedelics where you mm-hmm. encounter so-called spirits, but it's really just your brain that's developed an mm-hmm. ego, and that ego can visit you in different voices. You know, like maybe there's a totally just evolutionary boring, mm-hmm. and not that it's boring, it's still amazing, but way of explaining it, but it just, it doesn't, um, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I'm just endlessly curious. Like, I love mm-hmm. to hear what, other people think about it. I I only for me as I begin going down these rabbit holes, I'm only raising more and more questions. Like I'm only thinking of more and more. I feel like that's what we do though here on Won't Become Boring because yeah. that's what we're we're trying to fight the boredom. So we there's always yeah. gonna be an endless amount of questions that we're both gonna be just throwing at each other. Yeah. So, I mean, and I do that all the time too though. Which centers back to what this whole episode has been kind of about, you know, just like different ways to navigate conversation. Qu- just constantly question, throwing questions at each other is is a good conversation skill, I think, to have. Or maybe a practice. Like, yeah. it's a different side of conversation uh, that... Yeah, yeah. I, people like getting asked questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's not always true. I shouldn't say that. People like talking about themselves. Mm-hmm. Oh, for or sure. People it's like talking about way what they more think. than yeah, way more than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, no, and I mean like exactly what I was saying earlier about we're born in these modern times that are kind of boring, like that. Weirdly, you know, that's deep in my identity, deep in my ethos that like I. Um, becoming an adult, I just like I really have a desire to have p- some <laughs> bigger, higher peaks and lower valleys, basically, yeah. in my life than what has been set out before me and kind of what my parents, uh, basically, yeah, what my parents did. You know, have full lifelong careers and have a family, and that's what they wanted to do. I guess like that's I'm I'm afraid of that. Like I'm afraid of being trapped. I'm afraid of being bored. I'm afraid of yeah. not being able to be intellectually free and curious and so all that stuff. So if you're out stuff. there, aliens, hear our cry because we are we don't want to be in the box. <laughs> yeah, we're we're ready. We're fully woke. Like <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. ready to be zipped up, dude. If if an alien species came down to Earth and they needed people as tribute. 
specimens to be worked upon in a non like painful non uh confrontational way would you volunteer yourself they they came down like we need 5000 people from planet earth uh you know if i could go with jana and if she would be down i'll have to ask her but i would i would really want to go honestly <laughs> like <laughs> I would be. I they would put feel you like, under, and they do any test that they want. Okay, well, I would want any, some kind of contract. <laughs> any test, <laughs> but I mean, you well, know, contracts are human made. What? That's true. No, that's true. It would mean it would be bullshit to them. They'd be like, "What courts are you going to put us in? The galactic courts? <laughs> yeah. We destroyed them." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We are the well, no, courts. they're yeah, but they're not <laughs> confrontational. But they just come down and they're like, "Yeah, this is essentially what we're asking." I think I would. No, I mean, I, I mean, I, I feel, I feel drawn to yes to do that. I mean, um, yeah, I'm game. Let's do it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, but I, I mean, well, yeah, I only can't because of my loved ones. I yeah, yeah, you know, uh, but. Yeah, I mean, I I think about that, like, people that have abduction, like, the mm. abduction stories, though mm-hmm. I think a lot of them are very questionable, but, like... Well, it's weird whenever people start having, like, when there starts becoming reports from huge cities from people that don't know each other. There's been plenty of times in history where a city has reported sightings of at least yeah, UFOs mass sightings yeah mass sighting but is that also mass uh what's the word hysteria is it hysteria or mass hallucin <sighs> like you can't have distributed spontaneous hysteria at the same unless time unless the there like, unless someone already rang the bell though unless someone was already like oh i saw bigfoot then it's like no, I, I guess mean, that's a little different. Bigfoot's a little different. That's a whole other topic. Yeah, if you he got if you could, got multiple that, people, hey, Bigfoot could also be an interdimensional being. Anyways, <laughs> just saying, just saying, just saying. Possible topic for the future. It um, is. <laughs> uh, if if you got multiple people like not next to each other in the city, like someone's on First Street and someone's on Fifth Street, mm-hmm. and they both see the thing at the same time, and they both react, and then the people around them react. Yeah, maybe if it's a group of people in one place and that's the only group of witnesses and there was one point of view. Yeah, that's where the more people you have independently witnessing it with independent perspectives, like mm-hmm. the uh, the more certain you can be. And that's like in those mass sightings, there's there's one famous one that there's videos like for. Like Brazil totally or something? Yeah. <sighs> There's one in Brazil. There's one in Israel. Arizona. There are pl- yeah, there are plenty in like New Mexico, Arizona area. Well, and that's kind of why I said throughout history because we we could one day whenever we do more research, we could include that in the research of how many si- mass sightings there have been of UFOs at least because yeah, it it's all around the world for sure, and for some reason South America seems to be bumping. <laughs> I've See, at least heard and read and seen video of that like people are just like yeah it's just kind of like even government officials have been like yeah like these things come we see them on our radars countries. we don't know what they are yeah in those countries you know it's common to see yeah yeah or mayor like you know smaller form of government in those countries that are that are like I don't know it's not in their interest to really lie about that you know yeah um. Yeah, and I mean, th- there's something going on, you know. There's clearly something strange. Mm-hmm. Um. Hopefully, I really hope that's the case, because it's because like you said before, yeah. it's real boring if that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it, it just it really, it's hard to believe. There's just so much evidence, so much independent evidence. It's hard to believe that a hundred percent of it is BS. Mm -hmm. Like, that's really hard for me to believe. Like, there's clearly something up, clearly something we don't understand. Um, Are we even supposed to understand it? Yeah, and and that's, what are we supposed to understand? (laughs) You know, like, do we already know too much? And there's, 
this is where you get into religious territory where people and I don't know, people think there are certain lines you cross because of religious reasons. Like you can't raise someone from the dead. Mm-hmm. Like that's for some reason that's forbidden or that's forbidden knowledge or there's forbidden knowledge. Like just that idea mm-hmm. for something forbidden from our hands. And, you know, even that was like the, the story of tower of Babel, like the hubris of man to think that he could build a tower up to heaven. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you think of that as an analogy, like that's, that's, you know, just an analogy of the hubris of man, but yeah, hubris of humans. But um, that's why some man, the Bible is so good at scaring people because <laughs> I just look at stories like that and I'm like, if the Bible was true, if it is, we got a lot of towers of Babel. See, yeah, and that's what I was saying in a earlier, physical like, realm or even in the analogy or like metaphorically speaking, you know. Yeah, we're at we're, we're at in a some deep shit all time high. With, if that's the case, sorry. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I'm just agreeing. Like we're at an extreme with that, where we're really, you know, stepping up to become gods. We're trying to, you know, people have these conferences. People have these, uh, I like ideas, like specifically, like um, you know, extended life or living forever that they chase with with great seriousness and lots of money and serious work. And, you know, like Ray Kurzweil, like a person that is convinced that he is in what he calls escape velocity, Mm -hmm. which basically means even though he's 60 or something, which basically means that you will be alive long enough to make it to regenerative bodily technology that will allow you to stay ahead of death long enough to where then you'll get to the point to where we fully beat death and you can live forever. And he legitimately believes that and is pursuing it with millions and millions of dollars and others are doing that. And that's just one example of like the, the hubris to think that. And what a horrible I wanna, time I wanna to be live alive as then. long as I can. What? What a horrible time to do. We'll probably be dead by the time that comes around. I don't, See, I, if you if you believe they have arguments for it, you know, lots of people believe their arguments. Lots of smart people, if you believe their arguments, their models, their graphs, you know, because mm-hmm. that's what they've they're got. They're predicting but, that it's going to happen soon. Yeah, I mean, well, but this goes into the sing. Do you know my the point is like at a price? They're not just going to be handing that out to everyone. No, that's not, and that's not. That's Ever. not necessarily the theory. <laughs> the theory will, is that it will be within grasp at all. And these are people who are elites who want to be the first to grab at it. But, like, have you heard of, like, the singularity theory? Like, Mm-mm. Well, maybe. It, well, Ray Kurzweil is the person that basically came up with it. He's, he's kind of an inventor, genius. But anyway, it's just this idea that... And it goes along with, like, the increasing of computing power this idea that we're entering the edge of the event horizon Mm -hmm. of like a black hole of technology where things are going to be so super powerful so quickly that we're not ready. And he ties in, you know, beliefs about AI, super AI, Mm -hmm. and that we're, you know, 15 years from that and that AI tools and like biocomputing and all of that will figure out like perfect algorithms for regenerative bodily technology and material mm-hmm. sciences. And he just basically tells a story and narrative of all of these fields coming together and they're all in their exponential curve. And, and we've proven that because you can track it and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. And, and you can tell by likely by these dates or likely by these dates, um, these technologies will exist because there will be enough computing power. And, you know, he's made very accurate predictions. He's been making predictions for a long time and is for like, he's like 78 out of, out of 110 or something like that. Hmm. Like a really has a really good shot (laughs) on the predictions he made for, for things, but it's a whole belief system that's wrapped in very, it's wrapped in hubris. It's wrapped in the idea that us humans, we're going to build ultimate super intelligence. That's even beyond us. That gives us perfect knowledge that, we're going to extend our lives forever, that we're going to reach, 
you know, as far as we can out into the stars. And, you know, I'm, I want to go to the stars. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I have ambition and I want humanity to last and to grow and to thrive. But that's like, and I kind of, I kind of was attracted to those ideas at one point and fell into those ideas, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just hubris. Like you're saying, like it, it, it's tower of Babel and like, I, for me, that that tells me less that we're about mm. to see this great change that they're predicting, and tells mm-hmm. me more that we're about to have, you know, a reset, or we're about to be, you know, put back in our place a little bit. Oh, because things are fragile, actually. Even though we're talking about technology, you mean like destructive reset? I hope no. I hope not. I don't. I don't know. Like everyone thinks that right now. I'm optimistic. I I really don't think that's likely. I don't think. There's been so have many chances that it could be destructive. Like the world could have been destructive, you know, yeah. at one time. And you know, that's that's another thing that, that really does tie into aliens as well. Like how we almost distort ourselves, like the nuclear bombs, and like how the supposed all the alien stuff mm-hmm. happened right after, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the the testing of the mm-hmm. nuclear bomb and and even using it. Yeah, and. It's it's true, and the and the bomb itself, yeah. To like talk using about hubris, it in war and stuff, yeah. The hubris to say that we're gonna harness like the most destructive force of nature, yeah, and use it on our own planet against our enemies. And you know, we can make way bigger nuclear bombs now. Like mm-hmm. we know that once you know the recipe, you just add instead of one cup of sugar, you add two cups of sugar. You know, <laughs> yeah, like that's it. Dude, and so we can make mega big bombs yeah. that can like change the environment of Mars or something like that's a theory of how to change Mars is to like nuke the cap, the caps of it. So we can make mega big bombs like that. And that's, that's hubris. That's Mm -hmm. a tower of Babel. I mean, but like, what if, what if living on this earth for longer than, I don't know, a hundred years is what hell is. <laughs> because you're always gonna experience I don't know, like what if what if I mean if you try if you ask the Dalai Lama that he would tell you he'd tell you the opposite. Or uh, I don't know, someone enlightened. Hmm. So really what does that mean? Does that mean and that goes into free will? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, well if he can be happy, can you? Or if he can discover internal peace and overcome whatever ego and desire and all of that like Mm -hmm. is that and that's a pathway to happiness like could you and could i and so yeah i i think it depends on your perspective or who you're like i i would be stoked to live 100 years or i tell jan all the time that like i'm gonna live 200 years like (laughs) i want to do that i want to live the most Mm -hmm. out of anyone in my whole family line and you know that's me also I'm being optimistic about technology. Like I yeah. think technology is going to help people like really extend their lives and and like um Yeah, but what if that prolongs certain things that are negative? That type of I guess yeah, it just depends on the situation. Yeah, you we know, could, we, we could figure out so many different scenarios for something like that, I guess. Yeah. And like I don't really know, like I'm full of shit. Yes. Yeah, like I if 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 you think you're not gonna die, you mm-hmm. got a real fucking problem. Because mm-hmm. you're gonna die, and you should really come to grips with that. I'm talking to myself, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I don't know. Maybe we could just live forever at a for the price of a pretty pen, pretty hey, penny. You know, if if that is the Carbon, case, uh, what's I that want show? to live in such a way to where I thought I was gonna die. I want to mm-hmm. live, you know, with that with that just. Skin live in the game. like you're dying, like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yellow. But really, there's some skin in the game to saying like, I'm only gonna have this one fucking pathetic life. Mm-hmm. You know, I gotta <laughs> like, this is the skin I have. Like, I gotta make something of it, or I've gotta do what I think is I should do with it. And so I like that. That's it's a noble whatever idea, <laughs> whatever that means. You know, that we're just gonna to die. Be moral. Yeah. Oh yeah. Be some, moral. Here it, here it won't become boring. We believe in becoming moral. I said mortal. Mortal. <laughs> <laughs>